you. We, uh, we, um, we've all become very cognizant of Jack and his story. And when Alibaba went public with the largest IPO in history, uh, we knew a lot more about him. So I want to talk about his personal story. I want to talk about how many times he tried and failed and what kept him going. I want to talk about where he is today and how he got here and where he is going and how he expects to get there. And if he gets there, what will it all mean for him and for the people uh, that he wants to inspire? So I begin with this question, though, Jack. Why are you back at Davos? <laughs> it's a... It's a Long break for seven years. I think um, my last time trip here was year 2008. But um, I was coming for year 2001 for the Young Global Leader for Tomorrow. And I think, remember, I never heard about the Davos when I came. But when I came I, uh, I, in the Switzerland, so many young people demonstrate. Was such a horrible scene that I was, and, and I asked them, well, "Why did they do it?" They say, "Anti-globalization," and I say, "Why globalization is a great thing? Why people, ant you know, don't like it?" <laughs> and then we come all the way for two hours here. There's a machine gun. There's a people checking us. Say, "Oh God, is that is that a fallen or is that prison? We're gonna go is that?" <laughs> but when I joined the fallen. Uh, at the Young Global Leader, I was thrilled by uh, so many ideas. In, for the first three, four years, I learned what, what, does, what does the globalization mean? What does the corporate citizenship mean? What about social responsibility mean? And all these new ideas. And I see so many great leaders talking about leadership. And I benefit a lot. In the year 2008 and <clears throat> nine, when the financial crisis came, I think it's better go back to work. Because we can never win the world by talking. So we go back, spend seven years. Now I come back, I think it's time to do something return. Because I learned so much Let's talk 12 about years that. ago. So why I should not talk to the young global leader of today, sharing with them how we've gone through. So that was the thing. Let's start with where you are today. Just how big is Alibaba? How many people come every day? How many people come in a week? Uh, how fast is it growing? Yeah, we have uh, over 100 million buyers visiting our site, shopping our site um, every day. And we created... 100 million, million. every day. We created um, uh, 14 million jobs for China, directly and indirectly. <clears throat> and um, we grow from 18 people to 30,000 people, 18 people in my apartment, to now we have four big campers. Compared to 15 years ago, we were big. But compared to 15 years later, we're still a baby. <laughs> How big will you be 15 years from now? I think 15 years ago, I told my team that um, 15 years, in the past 15 years, we grow from nothing to this size. And 15 years later, I want people to see no about Alibaba, no Taobao, because it's already everywhere. I want 15 years ago when we talk about what is e-commerce, why small business can use this e-commerce, this internet can do business across the nation. And I hope 15 years later, people forget about e-commerce because they think it's like electricity. Nobody thinks it's a high tech today. Now, this is something that I don't want 15 years later. We still walk on the street talking about why and how e-commerce can help people. Talk about the IPO. Were you, did it exceed your expectations? Well, it's a pretty small IPO, 250. Yes, yeah, two, the largest two, IPO two. in the history. Of Wall Street. Of we raised, we, yeah, we and raised. number two was a Chinese bank. Thank you. I, I, uh, I remember year 2001, we went to uh, raise some uh, 5 million, 3 million venture capitalist dollars in the USA and got rejected. And I say we come back raising some a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, 
I think it, you know what we think more about is for two twenty five billion dollars how we can spend the money efficiently because this is not the money this is the trust from the world the trust from those people they want you to do better jobs to help more people they want to have a good return so. I think um, giving me more pressure because um, when our, our market cap is bigger than IBM, yes. or certain day we're bigger than Walmart, we're one of the top 10, 15 largest market cap company in the world. I told my team and myself, is that true? We're not that good. Because yeah. years ago, people say, oh, Alibaba model is terrible does not make money, have this and that, all the big bad things because Amazon is better, eBay is better, Google is better, and there's no such model like Alibaba in the USA. So I told myself and people, we were better than people thought. But today, when we are that big size, I said, no, we are not that good as people thought. We are just a company 15 years old. Average age is 27, 28 years old, young people. We're doing something that human beings have never tried. So I, want, I want to talk about the future. Let me take you back uh, to when you were born in Hangzhou, uh, where the headquarters still are, yep. uh, and your campus is there. You don't have a loot. Don't, don't move your loot. Your headquarters your there, there. Yeah, you found it there, loot there. You grew up in the 60s. 64. That was <laughs> Born in 64. That was the time of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, it was the end of the Cultural Revolution. It was, uh, well, my grandfather was uh, a tiny landlord. It was considered, after liberation, was considered to be a bad guy. So um, <clears throat> I was, um, I, 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 I know how tough it was uh, when I was a kid. You tried to get into three colleges. Mm -hmm. Each time they rejected you. No, I, I tried. There is an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to taste, take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But I had a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times, and I failed uh, um, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools, and. Uh, you, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, university, you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. Yeah. <laughs> they would become a middle school. <laughs> what effect did it have, though, uh, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. I think um, when I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years, I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police. They said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> you 20, 24 people went for the job. Yeah. 23 people were accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. <laughs> so to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know it'll be rejected. I just want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> Ten times you wrote them and said, "I'd like to come to Harvard." Yeah, and then I told myself, "Somebody I should go teach there, baby." <laughs> I, I, I think that can be arranged. Um, Richard Nixon came to Hangzhou. Yeah. And after that, tourists flooded the place. Yeah. And that's how you learned English. Yeah. I really. Like the, I don't know why, at 12, 13 years old, that time I suddenly fell in love into the language, the English. And there's no place you can, you can learn English at that time. There's no books, English books. So I went to the uh, Hangzhou Hotel, now called Hangzhou Shangri-La Hotel, because that was the hotel uh, can receive the foreign 
visitors. So every morning for nine years, I showed them around as a free guide, and they taught me English. And I think that changed me. Today, I'm 100% made in China. I've never got a one-day train outside China. Yeah. And uh, people, when people talk to me, say, Jack, how can you speak English like that? Why sometimes you, you talk like an Amer Western guys? I think that was the nine years. These Western for tourists opened my mind because everything they told me is so different from the things I learned from the schools and from my parents. So now I have a habit. Whatever I see, whatever I read, I use my mind. Think about it for two and minutes. Is that how Ma Jun became Jack Ma? Actually, Jack, the name was given by uh, a, a, a lady in tennis. She's a tourist. She came here and she said, came to Hangzhou. We had a, we become a pen friends. Ma Ring is so difficult to pronounce. So she said, do you, do you have an English name? I said, I don't. So can you give me an English name? She said, uh, okay. She said, my father called the Jack, my husband called Jack. What do you think about Jack? I said, good. <laughs> so I've been using that for that many years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first visit to America, 1995? 1995, yeah. I, uh, I've come here for a project helping the local government to building up a highway. Uh, and you tried the internet? I tried the internet in Seattle. And um, in a building called the U.S. Bank. I don't know whether U.S. Bank is still there or not, <clears throat> but it's a building. And uh, this, uh, my friend opened a small office, which is like uh, only 10% bigger than this room. And there are a lot of much computers in there. And uh, he said, uh, Jack, you, this is Internet. It was, I asked, what is Internet? He said, you know, search whatever you want. At that time, they used Mosaic, very slow. Right? Yeah. And I said, I don't use it. I don't want to type because internet, computer is so expensive in China. If I destroy it, yes. I cannot pay. He said, just to search it. So I searched the first word of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, because it's easy to spell, baby. <laughs> and I see beers from Germany, beers from USA, beers from uh, uh, Japan, but there's no beer from China. And I say, okay, type the second word is China. No data. Nothing. Nothing. And I 1995. said... 1995. 1995. No data about China. So I talked to my friend. Why not I make some, something about China? So we made um, a small, very ugly looking page called China. It's, it's, about, it's something like I did a translation agency and we listed on there. It was so shocking. We launched at 9.40 in the morning. 12.30, I got a phone call from my friend. He said, Jack, you know, you got five emails. I said, what is email? <laughs> <laughs> and they say, these are the things. See, people are so excited. Where are you? This is the first time I see a Chinese website on that. How can we kind of win? Can we do something together? So I think this is something interesting. So we should do it. Why did you call it Alibaba? Alibaba? Well, when I started, I think... Internet is global. We should have a global name. And a name that, um, interesting, like at that time, the best name is Yahoo. Yeah. Right, I think, I can, so I've been thinking for many days, suddenly think Alibaba is a good name. So I, I was happened to be in San, San Francisco that day. And I did have a lunch and the waitress come. I asked her, do you know about Alibaba? She said, yes. I said, what is Alibaba? She said, open sesame. Good. So I went on the street, asked about 10, 20 people. They all know about Alibaba, 40 thieves and uh, Open Sesame. And I think this is a good name. And start with A, whatever you talk about, Alibaba is always top. <laughs> you have said before that in creating Alibaba, you had to create trust. Yeah. Uh, because people in China were used to face to face. Yeah. How did you create trust? I think uh, because we started about doing business on the internet. I don't know you, you don't know me. So how can you do things online unless you have trust? So for e-commerce, the most important thing was trust. I think when I first went to USA for raising money, talking to the venture capitalists, a lot of people say, 
Oh, Jack. No, 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 no. China doing business by the Guanxi. How can you do business on internet? And I know that without the trust system, the credit system, it's impossible to do business. So we, we every, in the past four, 14 years, everything we do is trying to build up the trust system, the record system. Well, uh, Charlie, you know, I, I, I'm so proud of today when I, I talk to the young, today in China and in the world, people don't <laughs> trust each other. The government and people and, and media and everybody think, ah, this guy is cheating. But because of e-commerce, we finish 60 million transactions every day. People don't know each other. I don't know you, I send products to you. You don't know me, you wire the money to me. And I don't know you, I give a per person a package, I don't know him. He took something to so cross the ocean, cross river and send. This is the trust. We have six, at least 60 million trust happening every day. But you created it by creating an escrow account in the beginning. Yep. You know, and so you keep the money until they got the product. Yeah. And then you release the money. That's true. I mean, the escrow service is about Alipay. Uh, and, when I, when I, when I ha you know, this idea, I would love Davos. Because it was a big decision. Because for first to three years, Alibaba is just like e-marketplaces for, for information. Uh, what you have, what I have, we talk a lot of time, but don't do any business. Because there is no payment. I talk to the banks, no banks want to do it. Banks say, oh no, this thing never work. So I don't know what to do. Because if I start to launch a payment system, it's against the financial legal laws. Because you have to have a license. But if I don't do it, e-commerce will go nowhere. So then I went to Davos. I listened to a leadership discussion. Leadership is about responsibility. And after I listened to that panel, I give a call to my friends, my colleagues in the, my apartment say, do it now, immediately. If something wrong, the government not happy about that, if one body has to go to the prison, Jack might go to the prison. Because it is so important for China, for the world, to build up the trust system. And if you did not do it, I said, and do not do it properly, stealing money, money wash, no trust record, I send you to the prison. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that was the thing. And people, people don't like it. So many people I talked to at that time for Alipay, they say, this is the stupidest idea you have ever got. But I say, <laughs> I don't wear the stupid yeah. club as long as people use it. Now we have uh, 800 million people using this Alipay. Stupid yeah, things if you do whatever is better. Alipay is a privately held thing. It's not part of Alibaba. No, it's a private. Let me talk about money for a second. Yeah. Uh, you have never gotten money from the Chinese government? No. None. None. I, 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 um, I want it at the beginning. Okay. Uh, later, I don't want it because I think if the company always think about uh, picking money from out, out of the government off pockets, that company is, is rubbish. Think about how can you make money from the customers and market and then help customers succeed. That's our philosophy. No money from Chinese banks? No. 